Alright, here's my part two video uh, to my EVAP uh, error code problem. Um, after driving around about a day or two, my check engine light turned back on, same EVAP code. Um, so it got back underneath there this time, and uh, I think I hit a bad seal. Um, just was having a lot of trouble trying to really reach underneath there. So I just took the whole canister right out. There was just a couple uh, hoses, uh, the wire connector, and uh, just right here in between it, there was a single bolt holding this on. Uh, I believe it was a 12 millimeter. And that's it. The whole thing just pops right down. Not a big deal. <clears throat> Took the, the top off again. And, uh, you know, it just didn't look too bad inside there. But, uh, ah, yeah, I've got some spacing issue. It's not so much that mine was leaking that it couldn't get a seal when the valve actuates see like right now it's free it's free floating and you can give it power you can use like a 9 volt battery or this is 11 volts right here and to energize it that's uh, hard to do but all it's going to do is spring that guy closed which brings this shut. Alright, so this is inside. Get inside the light. This will spring against that very tightly. So that when there's a suction on this side, it'll keep that closed. And vice versa, if you try and blow on it, nothing will go through also. And, uh, you know, mine just wouldn't close all the way. Uh, with the battery on and this plunger you know, pushing against it, I still had a leak. So it didn't matter about this seal or any other seal. It's just these two guys weren't mating properly with enough tension to get a good seal. So what I did, I put a little spacer in here. This little silver guy is not supposed to be there, but it's just making this a little bit taller. So it's shimming it about a couple thou. And, uh, now I can finally get a good seal just with this alone. Next, I still want to clean up this area a little bit better um, and try and get this sealed a little better. But my problem was it was here between these two guys. And for some reason I have a height problem. Yeah, I've seen on uh, Amazon. I can get that for about 26 bucks. Uh, that's going to come with its own problems. Because this screw's got to come out. Yep, that's a Phillips head. Doesn't look like it. And on the other side, same thing. Barely looks like a Phillips head. And those things are just going to break off. I know it. So, I'd rather not play with it. Should be able to get this works. I mean, the valve actuates fine. Just got to get that cleaned up, get the height right. This thing's going to work. So, hope that helps anybody. And uh, once again, I'll put down in the comments of uh, how far I make it and uh, that the check engine light stays off. Uh, if you got any comments, leave them below. One more added note. Um, so I was filing down this area to get it clean. It seemed like it was pretty clean, but 
I got off the Dremel with a sanding drum on it. And oh my god, it found a ton more rust. Man, just keep going to you got a pretty good surface. This is really pitted. I don't know how much more I can go down before it gets too thin. But uh boy, there's a lot of miss there's, it took off a lot of material that uh was just rusted. I'm surprised there it was that thick. Um Maybe that's where part of my height problem is, is just the rust, you know, was kind of, you know, it bubbles up and it uh, actually becomes thicker and thicker. And I, maybe it was enough just to screw me over. Um, I just put it together real quick and checked it out and, yep, I got a real good seal now. But it does leak around here, so, um, but I didn't put any uh, silicone or anything on there. It was just a quick test. So, I thought I did that. Till next time.